Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting First Snowfall and I'm sipping on some peach tea. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're gonna find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I like to call brown, fire red, green oxide, cobalt blue, deep yellow, and Mars black. And of course you can certainly switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have a white piece of chalk that I'll be using for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number eight round synthetic brush and I have a number two round synthetic brush. And I'll refer to these as small, medium and large as we go through the painting process. And of course you can switch those up as well if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you'll probably wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of the canvas to the same type of paint and brushes and all the good stuff in between. So that's there. There's also a link where you could download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be painting our background. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush to paint, but I'm gonna use my medium brush to mix, to pre-mix a custom color. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing my background all with a light to medium grayish tone, but I'm gonna be sectioning it off. I'm gonna have my sky, I'm gonna have my background land, and then I'll have my ground. I'll be playing with my with a medium gray and white to create some gradients and it'll give us our a wonderful place to start our beautiful snowy landscape autumn snowy landscape <laughs> so i'm going to use my medium brush to pre-mix myself my gray color which i have already done how i got to this was i used a bunch of white about half the amount of white i'll pick with brown and then just a little bit of black and then what I'm gonna do, I just spin it together. I'm going for kind of a neutral, nor, um, medium type of gray in order to um, work this as my background. When I think of like a snowy day, I think of a potentially gray sky. So, cause it's, uh, the snow comes from clouds. So that sky is typically on the grayer side. So that's where I'm starting with that. And then we'll use it as a background for our landscape and our ground as well. So that's where I'm headed. I'm gonna put my medium brush away now and I'm gonna take out my large brush. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a couple of markers so we can have uh, so we know when to stop the sky, when to stop the um, forest area, and then where to begin the ground. So I'm gonna find myself about halfway on up or down this left-hand side. I'm gonna come below that about an inch, make myself a mark, a mark, and then above it about an inch and a half to two inches, make myself a mark. And then I'm gonna come over to the right side about halfway up or down. I'm gonna come down from that about two inches, make myself a mark, and about up two inches, make myself a mark. These will just be our stopping points for the sky versus the land, the um, background trees versus the ground. So I'm gonna pick up more of my gray. I'm gonna start up at the top of my sky using a left to right type of brush stroke. 
You could certainly use any kind of brush stroke that you want. If you want to use circles, use circles, but I would recommend just kind of keeping in each section, just keep a consistent brush stroke. So if you decide to, on the sky, use a left to right, then use the left to right through the whole sky. If when you get to the land, you do a circular, then do that throughout the whole land. It just keeps for a harmonious type of um, area in the, in the painting. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up white on my dirty brush plus a little bit of my gray. So white and gray. I want my sky to go a little bit lighter as it's going down to reaching that landscape area. You can make it go as light as you want, but I don't recommend going all the way white because we are going to have our snow on top of it and you want the snow to be evident. So if you make this background sky all white, then you won't be able to see the snow coming down from the sky. So I'm just making it kind of a lighter version as it's going down towards the, um, the, the landscape that we're gonna be putting in in a second. And again, just kind of using my left to right brush stroke to get this to uh, blend in with each other. It's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna just kind of go back and forth like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up my gray. Without washing my brush, I just picked up my gray. I'm gonna do my landscape. I'm gonna start it at the bottom, just kind of connecting these two guys in through here with a uneven kind of line. You could really make it straight if you want. I just want it to look like we've got a little bit of maybe a hill or some kind of, um, landscape for the ground that's not super straight. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to be using a circular brush stroke on this particular section because I'm going to be doing some soft tree tops in a minute. So I'm going to keep this with my circular brush stroke to give me a little bit of textural um, type of effect at the top of the trees and a soft type of effect. So now that I've got it in through here, I'm just going to go up to my my sky and then I'm gonna pop up a couple of out of focus type of treetops. So I don't need a lot of paint to do this. When I get into that sky, in order to have it have soft edges, even if your sky is still wet, what I'm gonna do is just have very little bit of paint when I get up into that area. So right now, I'm just using the, tippy, uh, the tip of my brush and hardly touching my, my canvas at all. So that way I have these really nice soft edges as opposed to a really firm kind of edge like that. That's gonna make it look like it's close. I want it to look like it's far away. So I'm giving it these real soft edges almost disappearing into that sky. And I'm gonna do this across the whole uh, landscape and you can have whatever type of size trees that you want. Maybe you want some taller, some shorter. In this area over here, it doesn't really matter because it's gonna be hidden with your big autumn trees that, well, at least mine is gonna be hidden <laughs> with my big autumn trees in this area, so I'm not concerned about that. Then I'm gonna move on to the ground. And what I'm gonna do for the ground, I'm actually gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna start with white at the top and I'm gonna fade it down to a little bit darker as I go down towards the bottom. So I just am picking up, I washed and dried my brush, I'm gonna pick, I picked up white paint, and I'm gonna start up at the tippy top with some white paint in through here. I don't necessarily need it to be 100% white, so you'll see in a minute when I start incorporating the gray, how I will bring it, bring it up a little bit into this white area. I do kind of want, uh, in some areas, like over here, maybe a little soft edge as it's going into that, that background landscape. Some areas you can have a firm edge, some soft, whatever works for you is completely fine. And now as I'm working my way down this landscape, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of gray and white. So I'm gonna get this to go a little bit darker as it comes down towards the bottom of that landscape. So this is gonna give me a great depth perception in this piece of land. I'm kind of staying up at the top with white and just a teeny bit of gray right now. And as I work my way down towards the bottom, and you can see I'm using a left to right type of brush stroke. As I work my way down towards the bottom, I'm picking up more gray. So it goes a little bit darker. You don't have to go as dark as your, um, your tree line in through there, but if you wanna bring it a little bit darker, that's gonna to help to give um, some great 
perspective on it and it's going to allow the, again, the snow that we're going to put on in a minute or later the falling snow, it'll allow that to be much more visible. And then I'm just, again, going back and forth. I'm creating a nice soft kind of maybe a, a meadow type of field or something that this young person is enjoying the snow, the fresh snowfall, but you could certainly make yours more hilly or maybe put a path on it or whatever is exciting you as the painter, you can certainly emulate. And then we're gonna be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the treetops on our distant trees. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are green, brown, red, yellow, and possibly some of that gray as well if I feel like I need to counteract anything that I do. Gray is gonna be my safe color. <laughs> what I'd like to do is just make these really out of focus, soft, uh, the illusion of trees that have, maybe some of them have autumn colors on them, maybe some of them have already lost all of their leaves, so we'll see a lot of the gray. So you can really play with this as much as you want. What I don't wanna do is make them so vibrant in color that they're gonna take away from my focal point, which is gonna be the, the two larger trees that I'm gonna put over here, as well as my young person. So I really just want them to look off in the distance. So I'm gonna be using my large brush and I'm gonna be using very little bit of paint, and I'm gonna be using a combination of a stippling type of effect and a scrubbing or scumbling type of effect, which is gonna be these uh, short kind of circular type of motion, but I'm not gonna have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm gonna start with a teeny bit of green and, and brown on my brush. So I have a little bit of both colors, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap it off on my paper towel. This is just gonna ensure that I don't have a lot on my brush, and then I'm just gonna start add in these real soft kind of illusions of treetops. And in my head, I think that treetops kind of have a rounder or generic um, roundness to the top of them. So as I'm going through this, I kind of think, okay, well, if I want a treetop in through here, maybe I just give the illusion of a round type of um, appearance. And then, uh, you know, you can just sprinkle this in wherever you want to. I don't necessarily want to do it too too much too low in the forest because I'm going to have some tree trunks and stuff, but you could certainly bring some of this color down a little bit. Um, and then just while I have that color on my brush, I just kind of bring it throughout other areas in that forest um, that I want that color to be represented. And I hardly have any paint on my brush. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of red and brown. And I'm using the red or the brown to make this more of a softer muted color to emulate it being off in the distance. You could use blue, you could use your gray, you could use anything that you want, but I'm gonna, I start with just using the, the brown to help me out. So I have a little bit of red and brown on my brush. I did not wash my brush, so I might have the evidence of a little bit of the green still on there, which feeds my painterly eye and allows me to get these colors to intermingle. And for me, it makes it look a little bit more natural when I get some of these colors to start talking together, which works on my brush. And I also know that I am going to be doing a, um, a layer of fallen snow later on. So if I'm going through this process and I feel like I did too much or not enough, I'm going to be able to disguise it with snow later on, so I'm not terribly concerned about making this really perfect. Now, without washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up a teeny bit of yellow. Oops, I just accidentally put blue on my brush, so I have to wash my brush, because I don't want blue in my <laughs> in my trees. So, I'm washing my brush so I can have some clean yellow on there, and a tiny bit of brown as well. So a little bit of yellow and brown. I might put a little bit of red back on there in a second so I can get maybe some orange tones. I would have had a little red on my brush if it weren't for me putting blue on there accidentally, <laughs> but I'm just kind of sprinkling in a little bit of this yellow. That was a bit aggressive, but again, I can certainly hide it with a little bit of snow later on. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of red right now on my 
dirty brush so I can have that red and yellow kind of talking together, maybe put, giving me a couple of orange tones here and there. And I'm thinking that that's pretty good. I don't, re again, need to do a whole heck of a lot for this background area. I am going to be um, putting some little trees on the tree trunks in a minute. I just picked up a tiny bit more green to get this little area in through here. If you felt that you wanted more detail, you could certainly start, um, you know, adding a little bit more vibrant in the colors. But again, I just want mine to be really set off in the distance. So I'm not looking for a whole bunch of detail in mine. Um, and then I am going to be using my medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this forest all with its nice soft colors in it, you can uh, put your large brush away, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting some tree trunks and branches. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, and white. And I'm gonna be putting tree trunks and branches in two specific areas. I'm gonna give this whole land area a tree, uh, a trunk line, so to speak, down at the bottom and maybe a couple branches poking up in between. And then I'm gonna put my two larger trees in um, in these two areas. I'll have a shorter one here and then a really big one over in through here. So we're gonna do tree trunks and branches. I'm gonna start with the back area. And when I'm doing this, I'm just thinking this is way far off in the distance. I just really wanna give the illusion of something that connects these tree tops to the ground. I don't need to do much. I'm gonna put a little bit of black brown and white, all three colors on my brush at the same time, and just a little bit at the edge. I want this to look pretty natural, so I'm going to be doing this in a pretty rapid way where I'm gonna be just kind of uh, doing these vertical lines, something like that. Maybe every now and again, I'll, I'll bring one up into the interior of those um, trees up and through here, but I don't do a lot up top and I'm just gonna kind of keep move, maneuvering my brush down in this area. If I feel like there's a area that you might see more up and through there, I might put a taller one. I do want to also make it look like there's some brush or something uh, on the ground, some low lying branches or um, just other information that darkens the floor of the forest. So I can just kind of wiggle my brush down towards the bottom and give it a little bit more darkness and depth. But again, not much. I just really am looking to put some information down here to, to give the viewer the understanding that there is in fact tree trunks. They can be going in different directions maybe. And I keep alternating with my, or picking up my black brown and white in order to get, maybe some of them are gonna be darker. Maybe some of them are gonna be lighter. You know, you can have the varying tones of these trees within this forest because trees come in all different kinds of colors. So you can certainly add that, um, that effect by just giving, you know, maybe some light ones and some dark ones. And then I just kind of let my brush have fun giving these vertical lines throughout it. I think the key for me is to just not make it terribly uniform. So I really just allow my brush to enjoy the process. My brush in my hand, just kind of doing these vertical lines and then kind of wiggling it at the bottom of the forest to give that little bit of darkness. I think I need a couple of darker ones maybe in through maybe something in through here, just a couple of little darker ones just to give us that depth in the forest. And then maybe the uh, illusion of a couple of branches up top. And, you know, again, I'm doing it in a chaotic way. So that way it's going to provide the viewer with um, information that there's some thick ones and some thin ones. And I'm just gonna kind of cruise along and put a few on this side. This side isn't quite as important because I know I've got the other trees that are gonna be making their way in here in a minute. And then once I've got these done, I'm going to start working on my bigger trees. So my bigger trees are, I'm gonna have one in through here and one in through here. I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm just gonna pick up more black and brown. So this way these become a lot darker. I'm gonna have one right in here 
and this is going to be farther away than the big one I'm going to put here. So I, I, when I do my trees, I do like to have the bottom of them a little bit wider. To me, that just makes them look a little bit more natural. And then the branches, as they um, go away from the trunk, tend to be a little bit more narrow. You can certainly have any type of, and I'm just speaking of a generic style of tree, you could certainly have any type of tree that you want. And once I've got this, I want this tree to be a little bit higher than my um, than my background trees. So I'm gonna bring some of these branches up a little bit higher. I do know that I'm going to be having a lot of leaves on this tree, on these two front trees. So I am not concerned about how beautiful or perfect the tips of my branches are. I'm really just looking to give myself kind of a footprint where I want that these trees to be. Um, more concerned about the bottom of the tree being more perfect than the top of the tree, but that's um, gonna be a preference on your part, how extensive you want these um, little trees to be. We have snow and leaves, which are gonna um, enable us to um, hide or make the sky is <laughs> imperfect branches. I'm gonna go ahead and make myself a really big one in through here. So again, just loading my brush with black and brown. This one's gonna be pretty darn wide. I'm gonna have it almost maybe about two inches wide at the base of it. And then it's gonna, of course, get more narrow. At the bottom, we are gonna be finessing that a little bit with snow and leaves and stuff. So I'm not terribly concerned about that being perfect again. Um, I'm gonna put maybe a, a good sized branch coming off in this direction and then maybe a really tall one kind of coming up in through here, giving myself a real solid type of trunk to the tree. And then I'll just branch off of this big center one. And again, I'm using a combination of um, brown and black on my brush at all times. So this way I get some lighter branches that have a little bit of the brownish hue and then I'll get some darker um, areas that will have more of like shadow type of look to them. So you could certainly uh, attack this in a couple of different ways. You could, uh, you could have, you could do the whole base with black and then come back on top of it with uh, different layers for the, for the bark appearance to it. But again, I know I'm going to have so many leaves and other things that are going to um, just kind of work themselves around these branches. So I'm not concerned about all of that information being perfect on them. I'm kind of digging this the way that it is. I think I'm going to make just this a little bit wider in through here so it balances my tree so my tree doesn't look like it's going to fall over. And then once you've got this done, we are going to be using our large brush for the next step. So you can wash it and or uh, put this medium brush away, wash and dry your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the leaves on these two trees. We'll be putting a shadow underneath them and the leaves that have fallen on the ground underneath them. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my gray, brown, green, yellow, red, and maybe that's it, maybe a little white too. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to be putting a little shadow underneath these trees. I don't need much because again, it's a snowy day, so there's not gonna be a ton of shadow making you know, elements in, in the in the atmosphere, but they're big, huge autumn trees with lots of leaves. So in my head, they, they're gonna have a little bit of shadow underneath them. Then we'll do a base coat for the two different colored trees, and then we'll finish it up with some nice, vibrant leaves on top of it. So I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of my gray paint, and this is also gonna help to make the bottoms of the trees um, not just look like um, the tree is floating on top of the snow. So I have a little bit of my gray, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of get it messy along the bottom of this tree, and I'm, I'm just kind of scrubbing it in. I have hardly any paint on my brush. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one in through here, and then right at the base of that tree, 
I'm just gonna bring it up just a little bit and now I'm picking up a tiny bit of white. I didn't say I was gonna use white, but I am. <laughs> so I can get this to look just like it's got just a little bit of snow on that edge of the bottom of the tree. That just helps to soften the bottom of the tree so it doesn't, again, look like it is just a um, uh, stuck in the ground. And then we'll be putting leaves and stuff underneath too, so that'll help as well. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna put the base coat on, we'll call it my yellow tree. I'm gonna be using green, yellow, brown, and white on my brush at the same time. So I've got about equal parts of, let's see, probably can't see the green on there right now. Let me just put a little more so you can see. So I've got about equal parts of green, brown, and yellow. And I'm using these three colors together because in my head, most or all autumn trees, before they turn their yellow and their reds and their oranges, they start out green. So I like to incorporate the green in my autumn um, scenes and this is going to be my base coat so I want it to be a little bit darker. So I have all three of those colors on my brush and I'm going to start just dotting it in a stippling type of uh, uh, brush stroke. I'm going to make this as large as I want it but I don't need to do it too huge. I do want to have some of those peekaboo branches um, showing through. I also know I'm going to have my big red tree here in a minute too so I don't necessarily need it to go too far over to the left because my red tree is going to be covering my yellow tree at least in this area but I still want to have those um, branches kind of showing through so um, or the leaves kind of showing through behind there too so that's looking pretty good to me on this one I'm kind of dotting it so that my paint isn't too thick and will dry on the quicker side so that's looking pretty good now I'm going to wash and dry my brush I'm going to put my, my base coat for my um, red tree. So again, I'm gonna be using red, green, and brown. So I'm using the same color combination that I did on the yellow tree, but I'm substituting the yellow for red. So I have green, red, and brown on my brush at the same time. And I'm gonna approach it the same way that I did this little guy in through here with my dotting or stippling type of technique. And this really, when you, when you can start with a, a deeper base like this, it helps to add that depth within the tree. I know that this is probably still wet in through here and I'm okay with that. I'm gonna do a second layer in a minute which will help to get this red tree to pop out in front of the yellow tree, but I'm just getting a couple little branches to, to lean over and something like this. So just reloading my brush with green, red, and brown and giving myself a nice start to this, to this big red autumn tree. And while this is kind of drying, again, I'm leaving a couple of little peekaboo spots, but I'm not leaving a ton, um, just enough to give uh, that appearance of a couple of those branches and stuff peeking through. While that's drying, I'm gonna put a couple on the ground. So I have my red, green, and brown remnants on my brush right now. I'm just gonna use the corner of my brush to put a couple laying on the ground in through here. You could certainly use a large or uh, your medium brush to accomplish this, but I'm just kind of getting a few that have kind of fallen from the tree. Maybe they maybe they're all blown into the field. So you can have as many as you want. This is kind of a muddled color right now because it's just the base coat of um, what I'm doing as it gets towards the viewer down towards the bottom, you could certainly push your brush a little bit harder to make a couple of bigger marks if you wanted to. Now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'll put some of these guys down on the ground and then we'll put our little highlights on. So I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna pick back up a little bit of the yellow, brown, and green, just so I can give myself the start of my leaves on the ground in through here that resemble falling from this particular tree like this. And then I will pull a couple of these down, maybe a little bit in through here as well. And again, have fun with this. You know, you could really make yours as vibrant or as subtle as you want. I'm digging these colors down at the bottom to pull, tie everything together. So I'm kind of going aggressive with them down at the bottom, which is making me happy. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit more yellow and um, white, 
Did I say I was gonna use white? Yeah, I did. Yellow, I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow and white on my brush just to pop in a little bit of brightness onto this tree. I don't need to do much. Again, I know that I'm gonna be putting snow on here in a little bit. This is really, again, just to speak to the dimensional elements of the tree itself. So I'm just putting a little bit of yellow and white to pop in um, the, the brightness of some of these leaves. I know I have my red tree here, so I'm gonna leave, um, I'm not gonna work too much behind that one, and this is looking super pretty to me, so I'm going to now, um, if I can stop, here we go. I know I can, I know I can. I'm gonna wash my brush for this big tree in here, and my dominant color is gonna be red, but I could certainly use a little bit, oh, actually, let me, well, I'm gonna put back on the yellow and white because I wanna put the highlights on these little guys down here. So I put back yellow and white on my brush, put the couple of brighter little leaves down in through here. Um, when I go to the red tree, I can certainly um, use yellow as part of my highlight color, um, but we'll see what I'm gonna do when I get there. I'm washing and drying my brush. I'm gonna put red on my brush to start as my highlight color for this beautiful big red tree. I don't know if I'm gonna use any yellow. I'm digging the red already. So we've got red. Mm. Sometimes I just love it when I just put that second coat, making it all speak to me. I think I might use a little bit of yellow, but let me just put this red on first so I can see where I want it to go. And I'm just kind of, I'm not overdoing it. I'm not painting over all of those dark marks. I am gonna pick up a little bit of um, yellow with my red. So this way I've got almost like an orangey type of a tone that I'm gonna incorporate. Yeah, there we go. Incorporate in some of this red. So that way it looks like I've got there we go. Now, now, now it's talking to me. <laughs> and then I'm going to put a little bit of this on the ground. I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just going to pop in a couple of little tiny marks down in through here. Maybe, maybe a couple have fallen over in this area, picking up a little bit more red paint just to give myself a couple of little red dots. And again, if you overdo it on the ground, don't worry. We've got snow that'll help to cover this. This is just, or to um, disguise some of these pieces. This is again, just to kind of get us going in the fall trees. And then we're going to be using our piece of chalk for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful fall trees, all nice and finished, you can uh, put this large brush away, take out your piece of chalk, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our person. I'm gonna be using my chalk. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that you would like. Whatever is comfortable for you is fine by me. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll have something that looks like a person enjoying the first snowfall. I am going to be um, again, giving you a couple of markers. Now that I'm looking at my chalk next to my white snow, you might have difficulty seeing this. So I'm gonna switch to a pink piece of chalk so you guys can see it. You can certainly use any color that you would like, but I think pink will allow you, the viewer, to see this better. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find myself about the center of my canvas, up and down, left to right. So for me, that's somewhere in, I would say, in this vicinity. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come uh, almost halfway between that and the edge of my canvas. So um, I would say right about here and then go up just a little bit, maybe about a half of an inch or so. That's going to be represent the top of the head of my person. I'm going to come directly down to the bottom of my canvas from here. So somewhere here, I'm going to go to the right of um, my finger <laughs> about an inch, make a mark and then to the left, about an inch, inch and a half, make myself a mark. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just the bottom of where the hair is gonna go. This person that I'm drawing is gonna have long hair. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna connect this dot to here and this dot to here with a rounded top. So it's, this is gonna be the width of the head. My head is probably about two and a half to three inches wide. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna curve it around like this. And then I'm gonna give it this, once I get to about this uh, area, I'll do the same on this side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give it some wave. So I'm gonna take this and just give these gentle kind of waves making their way down to my marker. And then same thing on this side, just kind of these gentle waves making my way down to the marker. 
Now I just need to put on some arms that are going way up into the sky and, uh, and the side of the parchment's body. So I'm going to come about an inch below my, my land line in through here, maybe an inch, inch and a half, somewhere in through here. I'm going to make myself a marker on the right hand side of my canvas. Um, if this is the top of my head, I'm going to come over to the edge and then up about an inch and a half, make myself a marker. And I'm thinking the other marker is right about the same height as that. Yeah, that works right about in through there. I'm going to connect this one to this one. And this does not have to be anything perfect at this point because this is just acting as a guide for us to paint. Down on the bottom right hand side, I'm going to come to the right of my hair about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch. I'm going to connect here to here. What this is going to do is this is going to be the underside of the arm and then it's going to be the side of the body. So I'm going to take it from here. I'm going to just bring it down in kind of a diagonal way in through here and then bring it down the side of the body. I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side. So you can just kind of come directly across from here, give yourself a marker and then however high this, well these two could be I guess different heights but I'm going to be about in the center of my canvas and about the same height as that give or take a little bit. <laughs> and then this one I've got um, the, we're going to see the hand kind of waiting and catching snow. So I'm going to come down from this diagonally about an inch, inch and a half, I would say somewhere in through here. This is going to get connected to here and I'll make another mark down here. I'm going to go about an inch away from this one to the left. So I'm going to connect here to here and then I'll connect here, bring it up and then give it this little bit of a diagonal in through there. I'm going to connect here to here and then I'm going to give myself just the essence of a little hand. I'm just going to do that's going to be the thumb and this will be the underside of the hand. Again, we'll be painting this in. It'll look a little bit better, a little bit. It'll look a lot of bit better by the time we're done. This is going to be the sleeve wrapped around here. And then we're going to use our medium brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, make any adjustments that you want. Then you can take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to paint the base coat for our person. I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm going to use are brown, blue, red, yellow, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-mix myself a skin tone that we'll use for the little hand. We're going to have a custom teal type of a color for the sweater and then we're going to use brown for the hair. I'm going to create my two custom colors first and then we'll go ahead and make our base coats. So of course I've magically done it before so you can see where I'm headed. That's going to be my skin tone right there. How I got to that was about equal parts of yellow, red, brown, and white. And then I just spin it together. Yours might end up a little bit more pink, a little bit more yellow, a little bit more brown, whatever. Actually, I think I want this a little lighter now that I'm looking at it. Um, whatever shade it turns into, you can just adjust it a little bit. So I often use my own skin tone as my barometer. And to me, this looks a little bit too um, dark and pink. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of white and yellow to it. And that'll get me a little bit closer to where I'd like. That's looking pretty good. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to make my custom sweater color. Of course, you can have your sweater color, any color you'd like. This is what I'm going for here. It's like a nice dark teal type of a color. How I got to that was I used blue and brown. So my brown has kind of a little yellow properties to it. So when I mix it with my cobalt blue, which also has a little yellow type of properties to it, it provides me with a little bit of a greenish tinge to it because blue and yellow makes green. I could have used my yellow but it it would have turned it into a shade that I was I didn't want on it so I decided to use my brown as my mixing agent. So I'm going to pick up that teal color and I'm going to color in my sweater. I want this to look like a fluffy kind of sweater so I'm not going to do a clean brush stroke. I'm going to kind of just tap my brush 
and allow for the edges of my sweater to be bumpy. And this way, when I go to uh, add some highlights and shadows on it, it will have a more natural kind of sweater type of texture. Because I know a lot of my sweaters that I wear are fluffy <laughs> with the yarn or whatever they're made up of. You may st be able to see through your paint at this point because we did not use any white in the um, in the mixing process. White paint would allow for the opacity on this to be a bit higher, but because I did not use white paint um, in my mixing uh, formula, you may see some, you might be able to see through it, but that's going to allow for this to look a little bit more textured. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this side as well. I do have this little area around the hand, so I'm just gonna kind of paint that whole area in through here with my, with my color, and I'm just gonna kind of wrap it around the bottom of that hand a little bit. And of course, when we put the details on this sweater, it will, it will look much more natural. And if, as you're going through this, if you have um, some of your chalk is still evident around the edges of your of your sweater or of any of these objects that you're painting in. That's all right. You can, after um, it's done, you can certainly come back with either an eraser or some water and help to um, get that mark to go away. I'm just kind of attempting to paint over it so that way I don't have to worry about that later. But if you do have that uh, the evidence of it later, you can certainly just get rid of it in a really easy way, or we'll just hide it with some snow later on. <laughs> and then that's, that's looking pretty good for me. So now I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna take my custom skin color and paint my little hand. And again, this is just the base coat, so I don't need any, any great details right now. I just wanna kinda give something that looks like a thumb. Oh, this is like the same color as my, as my chalk. I just don't want my thumb to be too wide. There we go. Um, yours clearly is probably not going to be the same color as your chalk, but I'm just doing a base coat in through there. That's looking pretty good. And now I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to paint base coat of her hair with just brown. Of course, you could customize this hair as much as you want. I'm going to have her with like a chestnutty orange type of um, colored hair. You could have yours with black hair or blonde hair, whatever works for you. I do like to use a darker base coat when I'm doing hair, so I want her hair to be a little bit lighter and richer in tone by the time I'm done. So I'm going for this brown base uh, to help me along. So it'll look nice and textured and I'll get some good dimension in it as I build um, the layers of her hair. And I don't really need to do much. I'm just kind of bringing it down in a downward type of brush stroke. Again, I know I'm gonna be able to see through some of it, which is fine. I'm gonna bring it right up along my sweater. And if some of my sweater is still wet as I bump into it, that's all right. Because again, we've got lots of, lots of other elements that we're gonna be putting on top of this. And then once you've got this done, we're gonna be using our small brush for the next step. So you can put this large brush away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish her little hand. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are um, black, brown, skin, tone and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little shadow on the bottom side of her hand, the bottom side of her thumb. I'll make sure that it blends in with the skin tone. And then I'm gonna put a, um, a little highlight on the top side. I'm also gonna put a tiny little shadow inside this little part of the sleeve as well. So we can have that, um, that dimensional element there. So I'm gonna start with a tiny bit of black paint on my brush and I'm gonna put this little um, sleeve shadow on. <laughs> gonna do that first, just so I have that taken care of and I don't have to think about that. Now I'm gonna uh, wipe, whoops, wipe my brush off and pick up brown paint and I'm gonna get this dark side of um, the bottom of her hand. So this is brown and I just really wanna have um, a little shadowed part on the bottom of this hand just so we 
have that dimensional element to it. I don't need to do much right now. I'm picking up more of, I'm picking up my skin tone on my dirty brush so I can get that shadowy side to blend kind of up the, the edge of this hand. I'm not going for photorealism here. I'm just going for a fun winter autumn painting. But if you felt that you wanted it to be more realistic, you could certainly like take a picture of your own hand in that position and then just follow where your shadows and highlights are on your hand. I'm going to pick up a little bit more brown so I can put a shadow underneath her thumb in through here like this. And again, not doing much, just kind of allowing for my my thoughts to put the shadows where I think it would be um, appropriate. I'm picking up more of my skin tone now so I can just make sure that that thumb shadow blends up into the other part. Now I'm going to pick up a tiny bit of skin tone plus white in order to get just a little extra highlight on the top of here. Maybe a little on that knuckle area. Maybe a little bit where the, the fingernail would be or the part of the thumb. I'm not again doing a whole heck of a lot. I really am just looking to give something that looks a little authentic with the skin tone. We're going to have a big pile of snow on her hand later, so if it doesn't get perfect, you could even put mittens on her if you wanted to. Um, if it doesn't get perfect, that's okay. And then once you've got your hand done, let it dry, and if you have any additional little marks that you feel would benefit you, you could certainly do that. You put a little fingernail on if you wanted to. Um, and then we're gonna be using our medium brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your medium brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish our sweater. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are my custom teal plus white and if I feel I need to go into any other colors I will and I'll let you know. What I'm looking to do here is just make sure that I have everything fully painted. I can see I've got some transitional areas from um, the background that need to be taken care of and I want to give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more dimension. I'm going to be um, highlighting with my teal and white the top side of these sleeves uh, to give the illusion of the, the light from the top and give them a little bit of um, form on her body. And then as I get down towards this back, I really don't need to do much, just maybe picking up my, my teal to make sure that I've got these areas painted in. And I could even use maybe a little bit of black down at the bottom if I really wanted it to go into the shadows. So I'm gonna start with about equal parts of my teal and white on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna start with where I want my, my brightest of my bright highlights to go. So that's gonna be up along this area. And again, I don't need it to go, like I was talking on my trees and my background, I don't need it to go all the way white because we have snow coming. So when the snow comes, I want that snow to, to have its own whiteness or brightness to it. So I don't want these other colors that I'm doing to get that light. So you can see I'm just kind of blending it a little bit on, on the canvas. Again, picking up my teal plus white. I'm coming down this arm in through here to give myself this lightness on the side um, that I feel is kind of towards the top. And I'm just dabbing it. So because I'm using this round brush, it is allowing me to get this great texture on here and maybe we put a little bit of this lightness on the shoulder area to make it look like it's you know kind of more full or has more form to it than um, other areas and then I'm going to pick up just my teal as I get towards the dark side of that particular um, object and I didn't wash my brush, so if I have a little bit of the lightness on it, so be it. You could certainly use this as an opportunity to maybe, I'm picking up a tiny bit more white so I can show you here. If I felt that her, I wanted her arm to look a little fuller, I could bring, or if I want the sweater to look a little more wrinkled, I can certainly like leave, say, a dark area in through here. That's going to make the sweater look like it's got a little bit more wrinkles and stuff in it. So you can play with that. Um, 
with the texture and the, the wrinkles and stuff on the sweater just by adding light areas and dark areas. The light areas are gonna pop out, the dark areas are going to recede or go farther and farther away from the viewer. So I'm just gonna kind of tap this down this side. Now I'm just picking up my teal as I work my way down this edge of the sweater down towards the bottom. Again, I just am looking to make sure that I have a full coverage, making sure none of my chalk is showing, which I'm taking care of right now. <laughs> and then I think actually I am gonna pick up a tiny bit of black right down at this bottom where it meets the hairline in through here, just so I can have that extra bit of darkness down towards the bottom of the sweater. Maybe it dips in a little bit where her, the crook of her or the dip in her back is. This Just this little tiny um, thing can make, this little tiny element can make a world of difference in the dimensional element. So while I have this black on my brush, I'm gonna just carry it over here. And I'm not doing much, just a little bit to, again, speak to this is the top and this is the bottom. And this little element helps to um, to tell the viewer that. Now I'm just going to pick up my uh, teal as I work my way up the sweater, giving myself a second coat. And now I'm going to pick up my teal plus white to give my highlights. So about equal parts of both on the tip of my brush. I'm going to start up here where I want it to be pretty, pretty light. And then just kind of tapping. Again, I don't want to color in the whole thing. I want there to be some, some little dark pockets so it makes it look like it's maybe a knitted sweater. You could, of course, use this, um, this as an opportunity to play with making different stitching type of um, effects with, you know, with little cross marks and stuff, but I'm thinking once I put the snow falling, <laughs> the snow is going to really put um, a softness to all of these details that I'm doing. So if, even if I did do a firm uh, um, detail-oriented stitches on here, I might lose that, that detail work once I put my big snowfall that I'm gonna be putting in a little while. So if you wanna go that far, that's great, but I'm gonna skip it on this one because I know what's coming. I know my snow is going to be stealing the show and softening up everything else. So I am caught, I'm watching this little area in through here, making sure I can't see behind it. I'm getting rid of all my chalk marks. And then once I've got my sweater done, I'm going to wash and dry this brush because I will be using it for the next step so you can do the same. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish her hair. I'm gonna be using my medium brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, red, yellow, and white. And of course you could make your hair color whatever you'd like to. I'm gonna make mine kind of an orangey, chestnutty type of a color. How I'm gonna do this is I'm going to be using this brown as a base coat, and then I'm going to be adding a couple of different progressive layers, getting it lighter. I do want a specific area to have a little bit of a shadow, which is gonna be right in through here. That's going to tell the viewer that her head is kind of tipped back and almost looking up at the sky. So I'm gonna do that first. I'm gonna put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush and right above or at the bottom of where her head would be and right above where her sha her shoulders are, I'm gonna take a little bit of black paint and I'm just gonna kind of gently rub it in and maybe up a little bit. Again, this is going to help the viewer understand what's happening with her head, that her head is kind of tipped back and it's creating a little bit of a shadow underneath that, um, that hair. You could also, if you wanted to, put a tiny bit down at the bottom. I'm just using the remnants from my brush to put a tiny bit down at the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do while that's settling, I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm gonna create my custom uh, color that I'll be using for a highlight. Of course, I have magically done it off camera so you can see where I'm headed. So this is a pretty orangey red type of a color, but when I add it on top of that brown, it's gonna provide a beautiful, um, auburn type of chestnut color. How I got to this was I used red, yellow, brown, and a touch of white. So it's the same combination that I of colors that I use for my skin tone, only I'm gonna hardly use any white, just a teeny tiny bit of white, and I have more red and yellow in the combination. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna create this 
dark, rich, kind of orangey red type of a color. This is where I'm headed. Again, you could make yours whatever color that you would like. You'll see how it acts on top of my brown, and then you can certainly make a decision if you want to make a, a different color. After I get this on, I will be adding additional highlights, so you'll see how that works. So I've got my custom hair color on and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be painting it in a directional type of uh, brush stroke creating the illusion of the shape of the head so I've got it kind of from the center of the head and I'm just kind of pulling it to the right and to the left and I will when I do my highlights they will help to hide the um, any visible evidence of that background so I'm not concerned about that as of yet I can even because I know I didn't use a lot of white in my um, equation, I can put it right over this shadowy area a little bit and you'll still be able to detect that shadow underneath. So you still have the evidence of that illusion of the head being tipped back. As I come down the back of the head, I want her to look like her hair is a little wavy so I can use a wavy type of brush stroke to provide that illusion as well. And from the base coat that we did, we can start to, because my paint is transparent, we can start to see lighter spot, spots and darker spots because the, that base coat had those uh, tonal changes and shifts in it. I can even pull this color a little bit outside of my base coat. This is gonna help to show little maybe flyaway pieces or maybe little lighter pieces around the edges. You definitely want it to overlap your sweater a little bit so that way it looks like the hair is on top of the sweater and not next to the sweater. So once I've got that on there, that's looking pretty good to me. I'm gonna create a lighter version. I'm not washing my brush. I'm just gonna pick up some yellow and add white to it. So this is gonna be a very light, yellow type of a color that's going to be my highlight color for my hair. So, whoops, I just had a little bit of brown in there as well, which will work out just fine. Any light version will work. I didn't wash my brush and my hair color is still a little wet. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna provide these additional bright highlights to it. I will in a second um, pick up my base color as well. You can make this as dominant as you want. I'm picking up my uh, rust color right now to just get this to blend in just a little bit more so it's not too too vibrant. And I'm putting it brighter on this left hand side. I'm gonna put a little bit on the right hand side, but not much. And if you feel that you went too bold with your highlight, you can always, again, counteract it with whatever we used for the base coat. So we used brown for the base coat. So if you're going through this and saying, oh, I made that too light or too bright, just bring back some of that brown or wait till we do snow and disguise. <laughs> so you can, you know, snow is awesome. I love doing winter paintings because it's one of those things that it's like, oh, if I did something that I, I wasn't terribly fond of, I'll just put a little snow on it. And it's just a really fun, fun process to, to go through. And I'm adding a little bit down here in the back just so we can see maybe the direction of the hair. I'm picking up a little bit of my rust and brown right now just so I can get maybe a little bit darker version but not um, not terribly darker in this back area and again if you if you you know want to continue to go darker just keep picking up that that brown I'm gonna now pick up uh, my highlight color again just to get a couple more tweaks I'm actually picking up a tiny bit of white as well just to get just a itty bitty bit of additional brightness where the head I feel rounds the most and then I'm going to let it dry and if I feel I want to do any other tweaks I certainly will but I'm thinking that this is looking pretty good right now so we are going to be using our large brush for the next step so once you've got your hair done you can um, put this medium brush away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. <laughs> it's probably one of my favorite parts of winter paintings is putting the snow on it, putting the falling snow. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my large bristle brush. I'm gonna be using a combination of the gray color that we created and white. Cause I want to, I don't wanna just go white 
first and have everything a big white out. I want to I want it to look like it's got some dimension, so I've got to kind of progressively get to that bright white fluffy stuff. I want to have some snow in some strategic places, which I will be doing first, which is a little pile in her hand. I want some nice snow kind of resting on her head. I want to make sure that I hit um, the the ground the way that I want to. Maybe a little bit on these back treetops and then we'll and maybe a little bit sitting on these trees and then we'll let it snow everywhere. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to be picking up um, a little bit of white and my gray. So when I say a little bit, I'm talking just a tiny bit on the edge of the brush, the, the tip of the brush, and then I'm going to just tap it off on my paper towel. I just don't want to overdo it. I, I like to proceed with caution. I'm going to be putting some on her head, something like this, and again, you can be as aggressive as you want. I'm being non-aggressive, <laughs> but I want there to look like, you know, maybe she's been out here for a little while, so she she wants, you know, she's got these layers of, of snow on her head. Maybe she's got some on her sleeves somewhere in through here. I'll put the white in a minute, but just kind of tackling the the uh, first part, I'm going to put some in her hand. Maybe she's just, you know, had it up there for a while and it's a nice pile. I'm going to put a little bit on these, I'm just reloading my brush so I have some, oops, I just picked up a little bit of blue. I'm going to just use it, I guess. <laughs> you don't need to if you don't want to, but uh, you could put a little bit of blue in your gray and white mixture, whatever works for you. I'm going to just kind of pop in a couple of little bright spots on these back trees. And again, nothing much, just something that's going to look a little bit different than the falling snow itself. So it looks like maybe there's a couple of trees back here that have uh, the accumulation on the tips of them. Maybe I put a little bit in the tops of this, these trees over in through here. So maybe just the little piles here and there, nothing much but something that's going to say, oh, okay, this is a pile of snow sitting here as opposed to um, falling in front. You could get, again, as aggressive as you want with it. I'm just going to kind of put a couple of little piles in here, especially towards the top of the tree. I think that's where that's where the snow would sit first. So something like that works out just fine for me. And again, this is the gray plus white, so it's not all the way white yet. And again, just picking up a little bit more of that color combination, making sure that I've got, well, down here, I guess I need a little bit more white because it's gray down here. So just putting a little bit on these leaves, making sure that I've got a little bit of dimensional element in through here. And then once I've got um, those, well, that was not what I intended. Once I've got that in there, I'm going to put a little bit of white on her head as well. So I'm picking up just white on my dirty brush and I'm just going to kind of tap it in right at the tippy top of her head, maybe a little bit kind of coming down the back side. And I, again, hardly have any paint on my brush. I don't, I just am cautious about not overdoing it because I want to show the that detail underneath that we worked so hard at. You know, maybe there's a little bit that's piled up on her shoulder in through here. And again, it's going to snow in front of her head as well, but this is just kind of a little extra to say that it's maybe sitting on top of her head. Now I'm going to let it snow everywhere. So I'm going to pick up white paint and I'm picking up more this time. So I have quite a bit of white paint on my brush and Oh, wait, before I do that, hold on, I want to put her hand. I'm going to just wipe that off in very little bit, just finishing the pile in her hand before I go further. So again, it was just white paint, but I wanted to finish the little pile in her hand before I know I'm going to get wild and crazy when it comes to all the rest of the snow. There we go. So now I'm going to pick up a higher quantity of white paint. I really, in my a lot of my snow paintings, like the exterior to be almost like a border. So I'm going to be applying my, my snow in a dotting technique, but I'm going to put it really heavy around the exterior border and get it to um, be more faint as it's coming into the scenery. So this almost to me kind of makes it look like a, I don't know, like a Christmas card, like an old nostalgic kind of card of sorts, a holiday uh, greeting card with that nice bright border around the exterior. I'm going to 
So I'm going to work my way from the outside into the painting. So I just keep reloading with white paint at this point. I'm going to just kind of tap it around these edges and you can see how it, it kind of encapsulates the, the edges of the um, painting. And just for me, it's just a design element that I don't use it all the time, but sometimes when I'm doing these uh, winter paintings where I know that people will be using them, a lot of people use these as greeting cards. They'll create a greeting card or a holiday um card for their family and they use these paintings to design them so this is a, a great way to you know use the the border of of white paper and this kind of draws that attention right into the painting or into the image that you're doing so that's looking pretty good around those borders now what i'm going to do is i'm going to let myself run out of paint so i'm going to uh, keep with this dotting type of technique and as I'm coming in towards the paint or in towards the center, I'm just letting myself run out of paint. What's going to happen is it's going to look like a blizzard of sorts, <laughs> but a nice, a nice early wintry blizzard um, where I've got a lot of the dotting and it's going to show like a million little pieces. But because I'm letting myself run out of paint, it's becoming more transparent and translucent and it's allowing for it to look softer and fainter and I'm going to be putting it in front of everything. I am just about out of paint now so when I reload my brush I'm I don't want a lot in the middle so I will start again on those edges and then work my way in. So again this is going to allow me to naturally just kind of run out of paint and then when I feel that I'm I'm pretty out of paint then I can start working on that center area. And again, it's just allowing me to use the this bristle brush to its benefit, to, you know, to its fullest extent of what it, the capabilities it has. It's allowing me to add these thousands of little tiny dot marks, which instead of, you could flick the snow with a brush, you could sit painstakingly with a smaller brush and do every little individual dot. But with these bristle brushes, that it it allows it to look fluffy and like there's a thousand little snowflakes flying out in the sky so i love using them for this type of effect um, it just provides me with an easy way to to do snow and as i am coming into these center areas the snow is going to fall in front of everything so i'm just making sure that i don't forget stuff like in front of the tree i feel like i have too much paint on my brush i'm just going to wipe it off on my paper towel in front of the tree i definitely want there to look like there's snow in front of everything because when you're out in out in life <laughs> out in a snowstorm it doesn't just fall in front of the girl it's going to fall in front of everything so i'm going to just make sure that i create that effect and then once i'm done i again will just let it dry see if there's any other um places that i want to add this white fluffy stuff and then we have one last little step to go just making sure i've got maybe put a little i just put up a little bit more white maybe put a little bit more on some of these pieces of leaves in here maybe there's little piles of the bright stuff on top of those and you just kind of keep this is what i do i'll just keep adjusting it if i feel i want to add some brighter stuff i do if i want to back it off i can put some gray on top of it so you just have fun with this and then we're going to use our small brush for the next step so you can put this large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I typically sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I think I'm gonna go bottom left on this one with white paint. I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you would like for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it's your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a really fun late autumn, early winter inspired image. And I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.